Hi guys, Diane Burrows here. I'm the founder and CEO of birdsupplies.com and this video today is going to be about how to teach your bird to forage. Uh, foraging is a really important activity. In fact, wild parrots spend about 70% of their waking hours foraging um, with their flock mates throughout the day. And so when our pet birds don't learn how to forage and don't know how to forage, they experience a lot of boredom um, and a lot of empty time that creates um, behavior problems that are associated with boredom, like feather plucking, screaming, biting, that kind of thing. And so that's what uh, I'm going to work with you on today, is teaching you how to uh, teach your bird how to forage. But first let me tell you a little bit about birdsupplies.com. Birdsupplies.com was founded in 1998 um, in, in an effort to provide parrots with, uh, people who had parrots with premium, you know, really nice and safe bird supplies. And I found over the years that um, a lot of my customers were dealing with feather plucking problems. And, and in fact, um, feather plucking supplies were like some of my best sellers. And so I, sl I began doing a lot of research. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a behaviorist by training. And so I was just fascinated with the behavioral aspects of uh, feather plucking. And you know, so since so many veterinarians do say, hey, it's a behavioral issue, there's nothing medically wrong with the bird, um, I really wanted to fill that niche. And so that's what birdsupplies.com has evolved into. Um, my company now manufactures a range of bird collars for mild pluckers all the way through um, mutilators. And we also make a range of nutritional supplements that support birds overall health and well-being, but specifically uh, support birds that engage in feather plucking behavior. So we've got, you know, the calming formula for parrots and a feather growth formula, and then a variety of nutritional supplements that support known health issues that contribute to a feather plucking problem. And finally, I've written a book on uh, feather plucking, you can see it behind me, and several other books that describe in detail, step-by-step -step detail, how to go about developing a behavior plan to support your parrot. Because what we know about these behaviors is that the most effective strategy that you're ever gonna use is going to be behavior analysis, applied behavior analysis. So my workbooks walk you right through that and uh, you come out with a behavior plan to support your pet. So enough said about birdsupplies.com, let's talk about foraging, how to teach your bird to forage. So what exactly is foraging? Foraging is like the activity a bird does, it's an important job of searching for and working to get food, um, nutritional resources. And it's a community related um, effort because the parrots who live in large flocks often work with each other to um, you know, find food sources and nutritional substances that are in their environment. So like I had mentioned earlier, wild parrots spend up to 70% of their day, uh, their waking hours, just foraging for food. Um, and if you think about all the socialization and the teamwork and, and manual labor involved in obtaining a full diet, um, you can see that not only is foraging uh, an instinctual need for a bird, but it, uh, you know, it gives them exercise, socialization, and uh, allows them to use their mind. So um, that lifestyle is very different from most caged birds. Uh, caged birds, you know, they have their food ready and available at all times. Um, they may have a few toys, and toys are not the same thing as foraging, um, but they're not getting that mental stimulation and that enrichment that they get, that wild birds get from foraging. So, um, that's when they start developing these behavioral related problems. You know, some birds can be satisfied with playing with their toys all day long while their parent, their caretakers are at work, but a lot of birds just get, you know, bored out of their minds and then develop these behavior problems. So a lot of people think that maybe foraging is very time consuming, teaching the bird to forage is, takes a lot of time and a lot of money, and that's really not the case. Um, really. Uh, I, I give my birds foraging activities every day and a lot of times I'm just recycling um, bird toy parts or things like an egg carton or a cardboard box 
and or Dixie cups that are unwaxed um, you know and and then I'll purchase a few container type things to to put the food in and the substrate in um, and I've also purchased you know some like puzzle toys uh, Kitech makes some really great ones and another company that makes really great foraging um, products is called planet pleasures and they make like natural um, plant-based products so how to teach foraging has always been a question for a lot of people and in the wild um, think about it these pa baby parrots live with their parents for what two to three years uh, being taught all the ins and outs of how to survive in the wild and so parents par parents are teaching their babies how to forage you know for two to three years and the flock also um, you know participates in the training and so you know they have to teach the bird everything from what's safe to eat where the, the resources are and um, how to even crack open or obtain the food once they find it and so um, you as a pet parent um, your your bird was probably hand fed didn't have much interaction with mom and dad and never really learned how to forage and so these birds we find that hand raised birds tend to be a little more anxious and uh, weary of new things so it's going to be your job as as the caretaker to teach your bird how to forage and in my book uh, that you can find on birdsupplies.com entitled how to teach your bird to forage we'll learn more about how to do that um, it takes a little bit of time but once your bird learns the self-satisfaction that it gets from accomplishing a task to obtain food it is really enriching for it and it takes up a lot of its day and it really uh, helps to combat that boredom that a lot of parrots experience so we've got two levels of, of um, foraging uh, skill sets a beginner bird is going to need um, foraging toys that are um, easy to see um, maybe the food is tastier the colors are brighter and the bird can see um, that see the substrate and and access it very easily so a good example of that is like this this bowl right here which is just you know used toy parts and it's a stainless steel bowl that I can easily wash and stuff um, but my birds just love rifling through these to find the nut or the pellets that are in here um, it makes a little bit of a mess but it's very easy for them to um, just occupy their entire day with uh, these foraging toys um, if you used use if you do get used toy parts like for instance here's a hole here that I would maybe shove some uh, dried uh, fruit or, or uh, veggies in um, and I like to use natural uh, products as much as possible because birds really love natural products so this is an example of a very simple um, foraging toy that is just you can just use ordinary household items for here's another beginner foraging toy and what makes this beginner is a the holes are big enough that the bird can uh, depending on the size can maybe reach a toe in there or its beak in, in these larger holes and access um, something and just pull it out and then um, the other thing is it's clear and so the bird can move this around and and see that there are food port food uh, articles in here for him to get so I like to put these these have a, a hole at the top and the bottom and I like to use skewers and hang them from the top of the cage uh, whereas this is a great um, toy for like a ground feeder like a, uh, African greys and cockat some cockatoos and stuff so those are beginner foraging toys um, where the bird doesn't have to really use its intellect if you will to find the, um, the treat to obtain the treat but uh, here's another one that um, I use a lot it's just a coconut and the bird has to learn to pick up the top coconut to get to the the um, food product the food pellets inside now as the bird gets more and more used to manipulating objects and realizing that when it manipulates the objects that it can get uh, its food out of the deal then it's uh, 
uh, more willing to explore and use two-part puzzles. So for instance, here's one that I got on um, Amazon. And this is just simply a box that has a box uh, inside. And it, the bird has to, first of all, learn how to pull the sizal and, and lift this interior box out. And then when you get the toy, uh, that Tim has used this one a lot, but he's my African gray Tim now that you can hear in the background. But then Timmy had to learn to move this and not drop the box and get the food at the same time. So you can see that's a lot more advanced. It took him a long time to figure that out. And, uh, but once he did, um, he really enjoys this toy a lot. But there's also some toys, like I said, Kai Tech is a company that makes some puzzle toys. I think they call them creative foraging systems. They're things that mount on the cage side or you know hang down where the bird has to literally align uh, maybe two holes. Uh, and most of their foraging systems are they're um, transparent so the bird can see that there's food in there but they have to work the puzzle in order to obtain the um, uh, food item and so that's a more advanced type of foraging that most birds are able to work themselves up to um, so uh, the next thing I want to talk about is you can also do foraging, uh, you know, not just recycle toy parts and, and get containers and stuff, but you can also get a little crazy with vegetables. So for instance, this, this has been used this morning, but uh, this morning I stuffed this artichoke with Peachy's favorite vegetables. And um, so he just really enjoys this. And, and I find that he actually is more exploratory with vegetables when he, when they're in this. He's learned that, that he can manipulate these and he even chews off the, the leaves of the artichokes. But uh, uh, um, when he has to pick apart these leaves and stuff, uh, he spends a great deal of time with that and it occupies him really nicely. So, you know, you can get about as creative as you want. There's a lot of, um, like, uh, tips on Pinterest and um, you know different websites that give you just tons and tons of ideas of how to create foraging stations. And so one of the things that um, you want to consider when you're when you're looking for um, like foraging pieces to put in is that birds love texture. I don't know if you are aware of this but birds have the most unique tongue. First of all they've got a lot of nerve endings on their tongue and they don't have uh, much saliva at all like we do but they have these nerve endings on their tongue and then they've got this weird little y-shaped bone in their tongue that creates a slight indentation so if you've ever watched a bird how they can crack open a nut what they do is they manipulate that nut in their mouth and they use their tongue to fill for the seam and just pop that nut open um, yeah they do have strong jaws but that's how they pop open nuts so birds love things with texture and we love um, you know, the vegetables are one thing that has a lot of texture, but Planet Pleasure Toys, if you've ever had an opportunity to see them, they're just full of plant-based textures uh, that are from the birds' natural environments, palms and, and other uh, textures that um, parrots love. And so that's a great thing to use as substrate. Um, in fact, I prefer it more than, say, paper, although crinkled paper is a great substrate. But uh, papers might, you know, birds love to shred paper and make a little nest out of them and then that might make a bird hormonal. So consider using a lot of uh, natural textures if you can. Another uh, foraging thing that I use a lot is a pine cone. So I do have a pine cone tree or pine tree. I don't have one with me here, but I have a pine tree in my uh, front yard that's, I never spray it. And so the pine cones are essentially organic, and I might hide nuts and pellets into the in the pine cones. And it's a cheap way to, and nutritious way to um, support my parrot's foraging needs with natural ingredients. So another thing that birds love in foraging is uh, I don't know if you know this, but birds have exceptional vision. They have uh, unique cones in their eyes that allow them to see iridescent colors, and they see colors in bursts that we don't even we can't even imagine 
as humans, uh, especially when there's full spectrum lighting. And there have been numerous studies done in terms of what colors birds like. Some species have special colors that they love the most, probably the flowers and the fruits and, veg and vegetation that they eat the most. Others, you know, like different colors, but overwhelmingly it's colors that are on the rainbow. And those are the colors that uh, Planet Pleasures uses in their um, uh, toys. So birds love texture and color, and they also love sound. And as you can tell, they're very communicative, but birds have an excellent uh, sense of hearing. Um, and so if, if um, you wanna provide your birds some enrichment, uh, aside from the foraging toys, one thing you can do is play um, videos and, and music for your birds. My birds are maybe a little spoiled, but I play, um, they have a TV in their bird room actually, and I play YouTube um, parrots in rainforest shows. And uh, one show that I recently stumbled upon is called um, Bird TV for Parrots, and it plays all day long. And I found that my birds are just mesmerized by it. It's a really cool video. I'd really encourage you to check it out. So, in conclusion, you're going to be wanting your bird to obtain about 70% of its diet from these foraging activities. So, if you would uh, if you want to get involved in this, probably what you have to do is just, um, uh, you know, maybe sit down on some of these websites, uh, Parrot Enrichment's one, or Pinterest is another one, and start um, looking at things, looking at some of the activities and the um, creations that these people make, and collecting some of these supplies. Also, another thing I do is, is pretty much every morning, I pick up the used toy parts that um, can be recycled, and I use them in my foraging toys a lot. Um, so, uh, let's see. And finally, another thing that can really help your bird with the foraging and the exercise, and it's something that I do is I don't really cage my birds unless I have, you know, maybe I'm out of town and I have a pet sitter over or something like that. But I often keep my birds uh, cage door open, and I keep a play stand near the. Um, the door so that they can climb on the play stand. It's a Java tree. I don't know if you've seen them. They were beautiful um, pieces of kind of bird furniture, if you will. And uh, so I'll put forging stuff inside the cage, on the outside of the cage, and even all along that uh, Java tree. And so my birds are essentially, I wouldn't say they're forced to exercise, but they have ample exercise opportunities um, and it helps them stay active. And exercise is so important for birds because it really helps them reduce their stress levels and it prevents weight gain. And then it, it also boosts the immune system. So we've talked about a lot of things today um, and I hope you found this helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up. And in fact, why don't you think about subscribing to me? And if you want to hit, hit or click that little bell, you know, you'll get notified whenever I put a new video up. Um, but please add your comments. I think if, if everybody would add maybe one idea, foraging idea that they have, we would create a library essentially for, uh, you know, for our uh, selves to support each other with foraging, teaching our birds to forage. Well, thanks again for watching and um, stay tuned for more videos in the future. Thanks. <laughs>